I'm Tyler, aka Mallet, and today we're going to talk about vermiculture or worm farming. Before I get started, uh, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Uh, also, uh, go join the Malik's Plants and Your Plants group on Facebook. Uh, we are also Malik's Plants on all social media at Malik's Plants. All of our links are in the description. So vermi in Latin is worm, right? Um, I have been doing vermiculture or worm farming about 17, 18 years here. You guys get the advantage of learning from, you know, a lot of little nuanced things that I've learned throughout the years, right? Those things are what we're gonna be mostly centering on here, um, is the things that you can kind of only learn from just doing this for so long. All right, guys, so first off, let's talk about why worm farm, okay? What are some of the benefits of this, all right? So if you're not familiar, compost is, you know, is, is, is one of the best things for plants, okay? It helps to clean up roots. It helps, it helps rebalance the pH of the soil. It provides a, a uh, nutrient source that's very moderate. You can literally give it to almost anything. Um, uh, you can give it to seedlings even. I've, I've you know, I've, I've given little bits of compost to, you know, to really, really young seedlings without, without burning them, you know, without giving them nutrient burn at all. So the exact same compost that you would make in like a compost pile that you would turn over and stuff like that, worms produce pretty much the exact same compost. It's a little bit better because you're actually using, um, you know, it's essentially worm shit. Uh, worms propel themselves through the soil with their with their excrement, so that's what they're leaving behind. That's why they call it a casting, worm castings, right? Because they're they're like they're sliding through the soil like that, right? And they're leaving behind this like this like tr you know this sort of like film of their own their own feces, basically. So first off, we have our worm bin here. Um, I bought these uh, a long time ago, like I said, from, um, I believe from Uncle Jim's worm farm. This is what we call an upward migration unit, okay? What this means is that, so red, uh, red wigglers or Encenia fatida, the worm that we typically use in worm farming, um, is a pressure sensitive worm. Now what this means is they like to stay in four like to six inches of soil or so. So 80% and up or so, 90% even maybe, of the worms are going to be in these two top layers here. To kind of show you guys what I mean, let's disconnect these real quick. See that? Under the second bin, right? Hardly any worms, right? Because they're mostly in this top one and in the second one, right? But when, then when I lift up this one, you see all the little, little worms hanging there? And then I want to show you guys the inside of this right now, as there is tons of stuff in here. Gives you a good idea of what you can put in there too. Banana peels, watermelon. We'll get to uh, what you can actually put in there in a second though. Um, but I want to show you guys how I create. Oh, so we've got our new layers right here. Okay, we're only going to use one. You only use one at a time. Um, I have two bins. Oops. I have two bins. So normally what I do is I'll set you know, I'll set this in in the top of the other bin temporarily, right? And then what I like to do when I'm creating a new layer is I like to move over any and all, oh my goodness, look at all those, look at all those worms. Wow. That's a healthy bin when you see a ton of worms up at the top here. Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this here so it doesn't make a mess. I'm gonna move all the, all of the sort of non-composted um, stuff, all the organic matter, you know, these, these, uh, banana peels and these, uh, watermelon rinds and stuff. I'm going to move them to the new bin. So you'll look, look at all those worms in there. Nice, healthy red wigglers jumping around all over the place. And then now that we've put all of our stuff in the new bin, we're going to go ahead. Oh shit. We're going to go ahead and put it here. Okay. And then I have a pre-prepared. I love these bowls, by the way, this is one of the nuanced things that you can kind of learn from my experience. Okay. I love these bowls because, um, they're 2.5 gallons. 
uh, just by coincidence, I just happened to discover that this may, that this is like the perfect amount for these, okay? So as you can see, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna quickly flip it over so we don't spill. And then this, this particular uh, soil, this is, uh, well, first off, this is Fox Farm Ocean Forest. And normally, I would take my uh, my RO unit hose and kind of do like a like a six count over it, okay, to get it like you know like this like like moist. So it's like so so it's moist, but but uh, but like a wrung out sponge, right? There's no like water that's going to come leaking out of this. Like you want it a little bit more on the drier side, because the other thing we're going to add is these paper scraps. So these are actually micro shredded, um, and then we're going to go ahead and add these micro shreds to the soil. Now I soak these these micro uh, shredded uh, paper scraps in water for 24 to 48 hours before using them. I try to use as pure water as possible. If you have RO, uh, RO reverse osmosis water handy, that works. Um, tap water will work as well, especially because it's going to sit for 24 to 48 hours, right? So all of the, chl of the chlorine and chloramine should be gone by then, right? But worms are very sensitive, okay? So you want to, you know, really kind of watch what you give them as far as like, you know, chemicals, uh, corrosive things, etc. okay? So we put those paper scraps in there. Then what I like to do is I like to kind of take my hands and kind of use them almost like a rotary tool, right? Like this, right? And I go like this. See, and kind of get this all mixed up. Okay. And that creates like sort of your base, like, you know, your base environment, I would call that, right? You know, that's, that's, the, you know, the, 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 the paper provides them with, uh, with some good moisture content, just the right moisture content, right? Cause it kind of keeps it in, but it's still very wet. Right. Um, and then, you know, the soil, of course they, worms, worms live in soil. Right. Um, and so now you have an environment suitable to either, you know, to either put your, you know, your, your kitchen scraps on top or you can bury them. I kind of do a little bit of both. When it starts getting a little out of control on the top, there's certain things like mites and stuff like that that um, can kind of start to take over. And you know, if you bury stuff, it's kind of a little bit better for the worms. Which brings me to what kind of stuff can you use? Okay, we have some great examples right here of some stuff you can use, right? We've got some cantaloupe in there. We've got some watermelon. We've got some uh, uh, some banana peels. Uh, my wife and I save. Uh, well, she's mostly the coffee drinker, but uh, but we save all of our coffee grounds. Worms love coffee grounds. Okay, they like love them because they seem to kind of go nuts for it. Um. So yeah. So let's go ahead and add this stuff too. While we're at it here. So also what this does, saving a. Um, you know, they call this like, I've heard this referred to as like pre-rotting, right? So since this is sitting in our kitchen in this like dank, you know, jar, it's building up a bunch of bad bacteria, right? Um, uh, what we call anaerobic bacteria, bacteria that thrive in a oxygenless environment. And anaerobic bacteria are actually what stinks. So when you smell something that smells disgusting, like a like tepid water or, 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 you know, anything that's like rotting in like a bad way, right? Like, you know, so bad way as in like not composting right? It has that anaerobic smell, that disgusting, like rotting smell, right? But the good thing about worms and worm farming is that worms actually feed on those anaerobic bacteria. So a properly maintained worm bin shouldn't actually stink at all, okay? Um, a lot of people, I think, are hesitant to worm farm because they think, oh man, like, you know, this, this thing is going to stink and like, do I, do I need it far from my house or believe it or not, guys, I actually keep these inside. Okay. Um, the reason why I keep them inside is because, um, you know, here in Southern California, we have pretty great weather, right? You know, temperature range of like 20, 30 degrees each day or so. Right. But, um, that's still kind of a drastic range, right? And the worms become very, uh, non-productive when they're, when they're cold. Okay. So even in our relatively mild winters, um, they become a lot less productive if, uh, if, you know, if you keep them, if you keep them out, uh, outdoors and they're, and they're allowed to, you know, to get cold, anything below about, uh, I don't know, I'd say about 60, even, you know, they, they really start to slow down. They get real slow. They start to eat less. And, um, so same thing with this stuff. I'm going to do the little rotary fingers, kind of get it kind of, you know, kind of partially buried. That's kind of what I do. You know, don't worry about burying it too much. We already have all that other stuff buried in there. Right. As you can see, there's even a, a paper towel in here. This will be a good opportunity to go over the things, some of the things that 
shouldn't go in there. In fact, you can put so many things in here. I think it's almost better to concentrate on what you shouldn't put in there. Okay. Um, so potatoes, for instance, um, you can put potato scraps, but I recommend they either be chopped like super, super fine or don't use them at all. I tend to, to go with the don't use them at all because of the simple fact that, uh, potatoes or any sort of like root vegetable, potatoes, carrots, um, onion doesn't really do this for some reason, but a lot of the root vegetables tend to root in there in almost any size. I mean, I've seen a sliver of potato like this big fully root and grow, start to grow like a, like a super etiolated or, you know, stretch for lack of light plant in these bins, which is, which is kind of nuts. But, um, so any sort of fruit, banana peels, um, you know, uh, fine onion scraps, um, any sort of like fruit and vegetable scrap that you, you know, you know, that you have in the kitchen that's left over, all that stuff can go in here guys. And that's, you know, and, and it, and it feeds the worms. So you're essentially producing, you know, some of the most beautiful compost known to man from just garbage. Like how cool is that? Right? So as I mentioned earlier, around, you know, 90% and up of your worms are going to be in these top two layers. They can sense the pressure. And so they like to be in these top layers. So when you go to harvest them, what I do is I kind of, you know, you kind of, you kind of have to go like this and kind of loosen the bin first, right? Get it all nice and loose. And then I take it off. I kind of use the lips to kind of balance it. So I can make sure that I take off all this good compost that's here. Okay. And also it makes for less of a mess because we're going to set this on the ground real quick while we harvest the other bins. Okay, so you want to keep these, right? You, you, you want to really take care of that because that's, that's the, you know, those are your workers. That's where all your worms are. Okay, so like I said, anything below the, the uh, top two bins is finished compost. This is finished compost. The only other thing you see in here other than compost is the perlite. And that's only because that's a, uh, you know, it's technically a, a rock. It's a fired volcanic rock. Um, so they, they can't actually, um, digest that. It also doesn't compost, right? So it won't rot in any, in any real way, but the large majority of this is all, you know, just, just pure compost, which is, which is just, you know, like I said, one of the best things that you can give a plant. Okay. So I, I, I separate these layers. I, I then take them and just kind of flip them upside down into a trash can. Uh, we're not going to show that because that's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, guys, I stage these worm bins inside to keep them productive year round. So let's go ahead and teleport to that area real quick. All right. Now that we're inside, no longer need my glasses. <laughs> All right, guys. So as I talked about, this is where I normally stage them. Normally they're both, you know, I kind of just centered this here for aesthetic purposes, but normally they're both just kind of, you know, one sits right here, one sits right here. Um, one thing that I've learned that I really like to do, okay, is I, is, I think they even did this on purpose. It seems like it at least, you know, your standard quart mason jar fits perfectly right underneath here. Okay. Now in order to maintain, I used to kind of beat my head up against the wall, trying to maintain a good moisture content in the bins. Okay. If you do it, if you do what I said with the soil and the paper, right, you shouldn't really have to add water very often. What I mean by very often is in really hot weather, you know, I'll come in here with like two glasses of water and I'll pour like a glass, you know, carefully, slowly pour like a glass of water into each bin. Okay. Now what keeping this, this quart mason jar under here allows us to do, right. Or it allows the bins to do rather is to constantly drain. So you see, when I turned that valve on, nothing came out, right? I already knew that was going to happen because I normally, you know, I, I leave these open at all times. Now this can become problematic if your, if your jars do fill and you don't, you know, you don't check on it often enough, it will begin to leak out, which is why I, I staged them on, well, for, you know, there's a few different reasons, but it's one of the reasons why I staged them on some, uh, this is your standard, uh, Panda paper that they use in like grow rooms for like reflectivity on the walls, the white side of it. It's, it's white on one side and black on the other. That's why they call it Panda paper. And then, so with this valve open, it constantly drains into this, right? So, so it's, so it's like a, you know, it's very much like a pot, like draining water, right? It'll keep it at the perfect moisture content because it sort of only allows the perfect moisture content, right? And the rest of it just kind of leaks right out. Now, some people seem to think that you can give this stuff to your plants. Okay. 
In fact, I've even heard people call this worm tea. We actually have a tutorial on worm tea on the website under the grow school section on uh, malexplants.com, uh, the grow school drop down, and then uh, worm tea brewing. Um, I teach you guys how to make a very uh, cool, just little five gallon, um, you know, worm tea. But worm tea has to be aerated, okay? So earlier we talked about anaerobic bacteria or oxygenless bacteria. Worm tea is essentially a, a culture of aerobic bacteria. So you're putting, you know, worm castings in a bag, like a tea bag, and you're, and you're, you know, you're brewing worm tea. We will be doing another video on that, so look out for that soon. But this is not worm tea. This is what is referred to, the proper name for it is what they call lichette. Um, but lichette is basically, um, you know, worm pee. It's just, it's just, it, it's worm pee and it's highly, highly anaerobic guys. This stuff kind of stinks. Okay. This is one part of the worm bin that does kind of stink. I usually tend to empty these, as you can see, you know, it's really, it almost looks like there's something in there. There's not right. But like, you know, it's really stained up to about here, right? There's a reason for that. Cause I, you know, once I see it about there, about halfway, I empty it one. Cause I don't want it to spill. And two, cause once again, this stuff can kind of stink. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't smell that great. So instead what I do with this stuff is I kind of just pour it out typically. Um, some, you know, some plants will take it. Um, you know, I don't really want to really dive into that because, you know, I, I, I really don't want you guys giving this stuff to your plants, guys. I really don't. It does weird things to plants. Sometimes it causes a weird grow. Sometimes it causes like this weird burning. Okay, I had a fields patch that I gave some to a couple years ago. A uh, fields patch away from Australia. And it started to really get a lot of diseases after that. It took a full season or so for it to recover and start to be normal again. Um, and I was just from giving it lechette, like, I think like one time. Okay. All right, guys, now that we've shown the staging area real quick, just a few finishing points here. Um, so we have our two bins, our two top bins, right? Once again, it's an upward migration unit. So all the worms are in the top bins. Okay. So we harvested the bottom bins, right? We took off the top bins. We harvested the bottom bins, right? That's, that's our good stuff that we keep that the worms made for us. Right. And so normally I haven't done it yet. But normally I'm get, normally I would clean this off. This is like a like a screen of sorts. Mine, as you can see, is like falling apart. Um, if anybody knows where to get this stuff, <laughs> please tell me in the comments because I've been using the same sorry piece of like this was once like a, a like a cloth of some kind. Um, I've been using the same sorry piece of this like cloth for like yeah the entire time I've been worm farming. How it's how it hasn't like completely fallen apart, I have no idea. But see, I, I, I like to take this off. I'm not gonna do it right now because it's kind of messy, but um, I like to take this off and I put it flat on concrete around the edge of like grass or something. So I'll kind of grab, you know, I'll put the sprayer, I'll put it on like jet or full and I'll kind of spray like this. You can even do it with it in here too, you know, but I like to put it nice and flat on concrete. That way I can like hold the end of it like this and then kind of spray all this stuff off. I'll spray it into grass or sometimes I'll hold this above like a plant that I want to give it to and I'll kind of spray it off and kind of, you know, give it to the plant that way. Quick note, you know, what if something you don't want taken over in there starts to take over? There are a bunch of various different types of soil mites and, um, you know, heck, you could even accidentally put a different species of worm in there. Okay. And red wigglers do not like to compete. Okay. They really don't. So anything that kind of starts to take over in there, you know, they'll, they'll kind of just start being less productive and kind of hide. Okay. They're, they're not, they're not fighters. Okay. They like to kind of just do their thing and that's it. Now I will know I've only had to do this one time, literally one time in, you know, once again, the better part of 20 years of doing this, um, I've had to put diatomaceous earth. A lot of you are familiar, DE for short. It's, uh, it's diatomite. It's the most dominant mineral in the Earth's crust, actually. So let's pretend that this is cleaned up. You know, this is nice and cleaned up. And, you know, we're going to try to spread it back out to the edges again. Once again, this is, this is kind of a sorry piece of cloth here, so there's not really much I can do. And then you're going to take your you know, what was your top two bins, right? And they are now the bottom two bins, right? So now, you know, once again, we just continue to build layers on layers on layers on layers. We just redid this layer, so we don't need to do this right away. So the finishing touch, you know, is just to put the, the lid back on there like that. And that's it.
All right, guys, so I can't stress enough, okay, how rewarding vermiculture has been for me. Honestly, I love these little guys. They're, you know, I joke, I joke that they're like a pet to me. In fact, my wife eats a lot more fruit and whatnot than I do, so I, I like to make the joke that it's like ever since I've known my wife for five years, it's been the the age of Monica, you know, and that they and that they worship her and have built monuments to her and whatnot in there. <laughs> but um, anyway, this has been just as rewarding for me as horticulture, guys. Believe it or not, okay? Like I know that sounds strange. Probably you guys are like, oh, this, oh, this crazy guy, <laughs> this crazy Malik and his worms, right? But guys, you know, people often ask me, why do your plants look so freaking healthy? I think this is a big part of it, honestly, you know? Salute to these little guys because they are a big part of what makes the Malik's garden so much different. When people go, man, Malik, your, your plants are different. Every plant I've gotten from you has just been so much just healthier and thicker and robust, right? Well, I do a lot of things, but this is one of them and I think this is a really important one. So get out there and start your worm farms. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.